are another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Patty Padere, local realtor with Sun Group Ottawa, and we are joined today with Paige Watts from the Play Group Collective. So how do you feel like the business is going to go? Because you've got, obviously, the one aspect of it is that playground, and the other aspect of it is mediation. Is that going to be sort of submerged? Is it going to be still two sort of aspects of the space, or like, how do you envision it? No, that's a really good question. They're probably going to, they're two separate entities, you know, um, because the space is really for anyone. doesn't matter what type of caregiver you are. If you need a break or you need to, to just burn some of their energy off or you just want to make a new friend or you just want to talk or you just want to drink a coffee and peacefully watch your little one explore, like that's what this space gives you. And then mediation is really focused on families who are having, I would just say, communication struggles, to be honest. So that could be anyone, but it's definitely a very different energy Yeah, between the two of them. And how do you feel like you're, um, like, for the playground, how do you feel like you're presenting sort of the community in a way? And what sort of, I guess, your ideal client look like? Yeah, that's a great question, too. My ideal client is just honestly any caregiver who is looking for a change of pace. It's that kind of simple. Yeah. Um, it definitely comes from me of being like a young mom, a ex-special forces wife, a, a mom of three, someone in a new city who has no friends. You know, like parenting is so caregiving is so isolating. And the burnout right now is so high. It can. It can be extremely isolating and more so, like you said, like very, you burn out pretty easily. Yeah. Like they have so much energy from the moment they wake up at 5 a.m. until they go to bed at 7 and you're like, I'm going to do this all over again tomorrow. Yeah, it literally, it's Groundhog Day on repeat. And I think that's the other piece is like that shared wisdom. I have like, even just personally, maybe selfishly. I've learned so much, so many different things from Odd Bunch, which has saved my life for groceries, to Lord only knows what else. But the information that gets shared and exchanged through this space is like a wealth of knowledge that everybody deserves to know. Yeah. So I think that's the other thing is that, you know, it builds its own community within itself. Um, word of mouth is really important to me. I like Except how you people kind of feed put it in that. a way that it it's it sounds to me like that old sort of expression. It takes a village to raise a child. Yes, yeah, um, yes. So speaking so of much. my own my own experience, like I could not recall a time that my mom attended to me when I was a kid. It was mostly my aunts. Don't like I'm not saying my mom never, no, no, no. but it's just like my memory of it is mostly this aunt is doing this and this aunt is doing this. And if I wanted to really have special, you know chocolate or something i'll go talk to this one because she's the weak one and like just knowing which sort of aunt uh -huh. friend or which family member to pull from uh -huh. i believe it just kind of give my my mom that sort of sense of like i don't really need to worry about raising these kids because like i've got this whole family raising them. the support and we lived in a in a household where it's like a ten thousand square foot household but there's multiple different generations in the house on multiple different you know, you got your old section over here. They're all secluded in a way, but the, we have this massive, great space that we all share. Yeah, that and common the, understanding. Back, common understanding. So, like, my uncle would walk in, and my uncle is like, my dad would be talking to me, like, as if I'm talking to my dad. Like, mm -hmm. you can't do this, or you shouldn't do this. So, it literally, that concept of it takes a village was raised to a whole other level. There's so much accountability there, right? And I think... um I really recognize that the last couple of years going through my own stuff of being able to cook and then, yeah, someone else. There's so many little things within the mental load that in North America, we've decided that we should all just drown and take on ourselves, which Correct. is so right. unnecessary. Like we're basically looking at one household, two people, and then that's about it. We're two people working. Can't even afford daycare almost because yeah, it's... or like sometimes you're literally working just to pay for daycare for for the other person, mm -hmm. so the other person can actually take a break. But you're really not taking a break; you're burning out at work. Yeah. So like you might be better off actually just doing something like this, where 
it's a shared community in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're. You should be comfortable going to the washroom and your kid be safe. Yeah. And that yeah. safety is kind of the number one thing and goal for me is that I want everyone who comes to my space or experiences that community mm-hmm. to feel safe. Mm-hmm. And it is different for us, like, again, because I grew up in the Middle East and, like, the, the community here is completely different. Like, the way things are set up is 100% different. We're there. Like, you didn't have to just look at somebody and say, hey, I'm going to the bathroom. Can you watch out? It's just, like, they know. And they... Like, we're going to the bathroom. There's six other aunts watching or other grandmas from God knows who. Mm-hmm. Whose grandma is it? But we all call them grandma. Mm-hmm. So that sense... <laughs> Is really like it's there. Yeah. Here, I, I have never seen it. So it looks like you're kind of bringing that in a way. Thank you. With having multiple sort of, you know, all of those parents coming in, everything like you, you literally as a parent can go to the bathroom, do your thing, take a fifteen minute break without necessarily having to worry about the world is falling apart or your kid destroying something. You got it. Kids will be kids. It's a place for kids to be kids. Yeah. And it's a place for adults to. But it's also social. Like I find. Yeah. Or the kids themselves, like, I, you know, we, when you take a look at, uh, again, psychology speaks for itself. When you take a look at, you know, a kid that was like just the one, you know, single child kind of thing is completely different than when there is two or three children in the household that are close in age or two or three children that are apart. Completely different mentality. Mm-hmm. So with having something like this, it really gives them that, you know, sort of exposure, if you will, okay. other kids. Yeah. Not, not necessarily family and it's socialization a, you know, yeah totally you're in the, the same thing goes like i i used to train dogs as well too you know <laughs> okay. the biggest thing that you look at with dogs is like getting them social as early as possible okay i think it's the same thing with kids we just don't do it as often and we think we don't need it but i think we do need it in a way because we have so many introverts nowadays i'm an introvert myself by the way but i'm a, an introverted extrovert okay we're like i i need my my sort of alone time and everything but i still want to go and socialize and have a, then my battery just depleted. I got to go and recharge. I think it's similar as parents too, right? Because then we can just really take a step back and be like, okay, I'm not totally fucking this all up. <laughs> That's it. And let it go, you exactly. know, and then be able to lean on each other in that way too. Yeah. yeah. So like socialization, not only for the kids, but for the parents being able to just mm-hmm. that relatability, that normalization. Rel- I was just going to say relatability in a way because like you're giving something a life now where essentially like as a parent let's say I single parent I've been doing this for a while I can look at somebody else in the room and be like does your kid do this all the time like exactly. you know what I mean like yeah. you could check in yeah you yes, can bounce ideas in. on each it. other where before it you might be like the odd one out well, especially with social media and TikTok which I don't have but I can't imagine you know that the things that get shared with me from daycare struggles to just overstimulation to overloaded with misinformation or not enough information or, you know, as a parent, you go to the doctor for vaccines or checkups or whatever, but you don't get support in how to actually parent. Correct. You know, especially past the age of toddlerhood. You're kind of just like left to the wind, like, good luck, birdie, go fly. Try it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrifying. See how this works. Yes. Yeah, and then we're all just standing around wondering if we're doing it okay. How bad am I messing my children up? <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about the first act. How did the pandemic affect it? It was tough. I am so grateful for that space. I still have so many loyal customers um, that came from that space. It taught me a lot about business. It taught me a lot about return on investment. Taught me a lot about overhead, taught me a lot about commercial real estate, but it closed. The pandemic started only 11 months after I had opened. Uh, yeah. So uh, I had not even been open for a year. And especially like the segment you're serving, specifically the kids, they're the oh, no. biggest germ carriers I've ever seen in my life. It's just like that segment, right? Like, yeah. So definitely there's would have been no way for you to continue operating. No, and I went through all the hoops, you know, I did all the loans, I jumped through everything that I could kind of get my hands on. And my focus was like just being able to give my employees a job still. Um, 
and be able to support them. But I just couldn't do that anymore with it negatively affecting my family. So I really had to make a hard, 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 hard decision. And I had landlords who just weren't supportive. It's that simple, to be honest. They were not... It wasn't good. It was a bad... That's a thing, too. At the end of the day, like, it's... There's two two sides to every coin, mm-hmm. right? Like, we got to look at it as, okay, all, they're also business owners in a way. They have to support their business in one way or another, and unfortunately, it's just... Their business sat empty for two years Yeah. after I walked away, after they refused to help me. That was really hard for me because I didn't... I am a... I am someone who always takes... Tries... To always take the high road. So it was really hard for me not to share a lot of the why behind I had closed that space. And that's a lot of why I reopened this space is that that passion never died within me. And I had hoarded all of the stuff. <laughs> so I had all of my toys, all of my items still stored in my house. So it'd be much easier for you now with the new place for sure. Yeah. So it's essentially, it's like we, we don't want to call it second act with both like a 1.5. I would say second act, for sure, 2.0. I had worked with incredible mentors who refueled the fire in me as well. We're going to invest in a very bigger space with a lot of overhead. And then when this space had come around, it was so quick and easy. I was just able to get into it, get my stuff in there, and essentially open my doors right away. supposed to be what was happening. And that, for me, was amazing because then after going through everything I went through personally, lowered the stress levels, but was able to like get back into the community right away. So when I had thrown the idea out there, the feedback and response I got was overwhelming. So I did it, jumped in again. And then the cool thing about Almont as a, as a part of town is it's not that far off. Like, you know, 20 minutes from Canada, you're there, 15 minutes from, you know, five minutes from Carlton Place, 15 minutes from Stittsville. It was only 30 minutes to get here. 30 minutes to, to be... And it's the cutest little town. It's such an experience. So for me, it's like, bring your kids, get their energy out, and then go enjoy what this town has to offer. Exactly. So it's so lovely. Take some lovely photos, especially now with the fall coming. Oh my gosh, and Christmas. It's Hallmark movie capital. It's so cute. They do a lot of Hallmark movie in there, actually. I, mm-hmm. I have friends that work in that industry, and then tons of movies happen in Hallmark, believe it or not. Really? Because of the trails and like the the way the trees are and the, mm-hmm. the, all of the different photogenic sort of uh, areas of, of it in the center town. Like, it's so cool. It reminds me of the East Coast. It gives me East Coast vibes. Very East Coast vibe and this very close net community as well, too. Like, everybody's there helping everybody. Like, um, anytime you're on Main Street, like, you, you feel like people are just, just talk to you. Yeah. It's just so easy. You get a smile and a wave as opposed to a... Yeah. Middle finger, which is really nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's actually one of my favorite places to take a coffee on a Saturday or Sunday. Really? Always. Just because of, again, I live 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from it in Canada. So okay. I have a lot of friends that call the police. So it just makes, makes sense. We'll meet halfway. I'm in back with, and that's why I think this spoke to me so yeah. much is that it just was, yeah, like you said, it's so quick. It's so short. It's so easy to get to. And then once you get there, it just is like mad magical, especially this time of year in the fall. Oh, stop it. Now, would you be think like this is something that you sort of considering for the business as well, re- providing some sort of resources for parents and new parents, I should say, uh, coming into it and all of that? Is that something that you would want to look into or is it just going to be more of like just providing the space? Mm-hmm. That's a good question, too. I do... I used to do, which starting again and excited to get into registered programming, but I love to bring in local um, psychologists. I love to bring in local speech and language therapists, nutritionists, um, anyone totally that can provide that information and resource support or family therapists. I have a clinic that just reached out, which I'm so excited to collaborate with, who offer pre and postnatal support. So anyone, yeah, anyone that can be any sort of positive light in someone's life yeah. or offer any sort of a break in their day-to-day yes absolutely and that's the thing guess. and look at and then it could also be uh, another avenue like for example i know for a lot of psychologists like they can't fully uh, get their license unless they put a certain amount of hours mm-hmm. to you know um working with patients things like that but that could be an avenue for them where they can do a little bit of pro bono 
yeah, our workshops, right? Like there's so much, um, there's, there seems to be so much of a disconnect between like a parent and a child. That's really interesting. So being able to connect that for people allows them again to make that connection kind of within their own household when you remove whatever barriers kind of standing in their way. And I think it has to do too with the, uh, with the gap, right? Like with the gap in years between the parents and the child, like Hmm. you're no longer in that frame of mind. You don't know what's on the child's mind. You don't know what sort of what's going through their head. Or what you should put in their school lunches. That too. And and, and sometimes it's not up to the child. Like you really have to be the one sort of calling the shots in a way, but in a healthy way. Boundaries. That it's healthy for the kid and like maybe give them options. Hey, would you like this or would you like this? Like six or seven options that the kid will feel like they're actually making the choice versus, no, that's all you're having and this is it. Then like my whatever I say goes kind of thing. The illusion of choice is one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. And it's been my bargaining tool within my parenthood for so long. So you take away choice C that you didn't like Mm -hmm. and you replace it with two other choices that you know they're healthy and then now you got A, B, and C, and D. Yeah. It's the informality, I think, too. Yeah. And then the kid will feel so empowered. They're making their own choice. They feel like they're literally trailing their own, you know, blazing their own trail here in a way. Mm -hmm. But you as a parent, you're not taking that away from them. You're, you know, you're still there. You're still supporting them. You're still giving them healthy outlet in a way. They're they're also learning how to challenge and manage their emotions. Mm -hmm. You're managing your emotion as a parent as well, too, because you're not necessarily just you know, my way or the highway. Well, I think that, yeah, the there's a generation that's, I have this conversation often of, we're a new generation too, right? Like we're a new generation of parents. We're a new generation of, of motherhood. The independence that we have access to as a female today versus what our parents were raised through is so much different. So we also don't really almost have that same intergenerational support in the sense that our you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Our elders Mm -hmm. didn't have access to the same possibilities that we do to support our kids. So within this community, it's nice to, again, share that collective wisdom of what we can learn, what's been working for you, how does this help, how do you get through the day, what does that look like, how can I apply it, just whatever sticks, you know, take that away from it. And then whatever doesn't, just let it go. And that's the thing, too. Like, if we are going to compare generations and keep looking at, you know, the older generation and, like, we, we say things were done, done differently and all of that, I get it. But it's on us to break that cycle. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't keep blaming it on our parents and say, my parents did this, so that's why I'm like, no, no. My parents did this. I don't like it. Here's some of the things that I don't like about it and how can I fix it? Yeah. For my kids. Yeah. And my kids don't suffer the same way I suffered. Or feel the same sort of neglect or whatever the, the case may be. Yeah. Uh, or even feel like they're manipulating, whatever the case may be. Just let's fix it to the next generation by fixing ourselves. Yeah, and I think people don't, you know, we don't talk about how triggering <laughs> kids' reactions are to us. Yeah. And, like, the rage is real. The rage is so real sometimes. And there's no one standing there validating that rage. You know, there's a lot of shame that comes from feeling that rage. And instead, this space is like, no, man, your rage is valid. Not only (laughs) your rage is valid. Don't act on it. But your rage is valid. Exactly. Exactly. And I feel a lot of the times like we we have that rage because like all of a sudden, my God, that's how my parents felt. Yeah. But the rage is for it's a twofold, at least in my opinion. I don't know how you feel about it. But one fold is like just me going like. I am obviously annoyed with my child. Mm -hmm. And then the other portion of it, my reaction, I'm annoyed with the fact that I'm reacting like that, which is repeating that cycle that we were just talking about. Well, Senate, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's where the shame comes from. Very self-aware of you. That's where the shame comes from. It's like, I'm I'm ashamed. I just promised myself I'm not going to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Then why am I doing it? And now I'm ashamed and and it just keeps, it's like a very vicious cycle. And not having that community to lean on and be like, you know, I I did this and I, I'm so upset with myself. And then you have someone being like, yeah, you want to hear what I did today? Yeah. Like there's so many times where like, I just really want to strangle my child. Don't put that on camera, but we're going to leave it. Um, But (laughs) But actually, it's healthy. At the end of the day, like it's healthy because obviously like they're annoying you. There's something going on. Yeah. 
But as long as you don't act on it in a bad way, then you resolve it. Well, and how do we express that energy in a positive way, right? Is that working out? Is that coming to be social at a at my space? Is that, you know, own. what does that look like? To, to each their own. Exactly. You know, and you, you have to find out because for me, for example, I know my rage. The only way I can take it out is go to the gym. That's the only time that my brain is shut and I'm just acting on everything that I don't like. Yeah. And I throw it on the weights. The second Literally. I throw those weights on the ground, I feel like it's just, just gone. Like I don't care about it. Like, yeah. For some people, it might be, you know what, going to the range. Mm-hmm. Some people might be going to the golf range. For some other people, it might be going swimming. To each one, it's different for each one of us. We just have to find it out. So we also do, so I also lease, not lease, sorry, I sublet the space to professionals in the area. One of the professionals that I currently am working with is just this incredible yoga teacher. Um, so Wednesday evenings, she offers adult yoga. So I clear the floor. Um, she has the whole space and she just does a very incredible like meditatos. Well, I don't even know. I can't even put it into words. It's the best practice I've ever had in my life. She is fantastic. But being able to offer that to parents in the space, yeah, it's just kind of is an outlet for a lot of people, which is nice. And that's the thing. Sometimes, like I, I've mentioned all of those different examples, but for some people, it's really just time alone. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they really just need that half hour alone and the system is all recalibrating. Everything is back to normal. I don't feel shame or guilt, rage or anything. Yeah. I'm back to normal and I can be as patient as possible with my child. And I can't tell you how many parents have walked into my space feeling exactly the way you just described looking at me on the way out and just saying, thank you. I feel like I can get through the day now. And it it's so hard to put into words because I, I can't really, to be honest with you, the energy that this space provides people. But it's exactly that. It's just allowing people to feel some sort of light within themselves yeah. again. And that's so rewarding. So I, I was listening to um, Simon Sinek the other day. And like one of the things I love listening to him, by the way, is like one of my favorite offers out there and I love listening to a lot of the podcasts and things like that that he's been on and he kind of puts it together where like we really only need about eight minutes of space okay so like if I'm feeling some some sort of way and you're feeling some sort of way and we just have that sort of eight minutes of like you lean on me kind of thing or I lean on you we no longer need to feel rage or any other thing it's just we just need that eight minute of someone holding a safe space for us. I love that. And I've I've lately been like, you know what? With my friends, like I'm gonna when I'm feeling something is off, I'm just there. What's going on? What's on your mind? Mm-hmm. Give them that sort of eight to ten minutes, uninterrupted. Mm-hmm. Talk. Let me know what's going on, and then when you're done, then mm-hmm. we can circle back to whatever we want to talk about. Allowing them to feel heard. That's a lot of fun. That's it. You. That's all we need. Eight minutes. And apparently, it's a study that's been done, and it just came down to about eight minutes. So now it's like a code that they have between the friends, whatever, where do you have eight minutes? Okay. But might take this with me. Yeah. And then just see how that actually works. Let that person hold the space for you for eight minutes or vice versa and then see how you feel. I had, uh, can I share a little yeah. amazing piece of advice that's kind of similar is that someone might botch it, but essentially when your child gives you a hug, let them let go first. That's it. It's actually anytime someone, I, I've i actually put this in perspective for me, anytime someone gives me the hug and initiates the hug, I will let them hold on for as long as they want. I love that. I let the, I only let go when they let go. Okay. Because it's whoever holds on, the hug, well, actually whoever wants the hug first is normally the one that needs it more. Okay. And if okay. you let them kind of regulate themselves, they don't feel like you cut them off. They don't feel like it. You know they're unhurt. They feel at some point after, you know, 20, 30, 40 seconds, sometimes more. Yeah. They feel like they're done. That's when they let go. That's when you let go. That's that nonverbal connection. Exactly. Yeah. It goes a long way. 100%. You're holding the space. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. i love for us to continue this conversation. It feels like we could probably talk for hours, <laughs> even though we just literally just met. You make it easy. I, I told you that before. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'd love to come and visit the space as well, too, and for the folks out there to check it out. Face, thank you so much. There's so much that we can share. There's so much that we can bring on, and especially as a new parent. There's so many things that you could benefit from having a place like this yeah. to go in, let go, let your children just be children, mm-hmm. 
have that community sort of around to raise and like really just just watch them from afar. You don't necessarily have to interject. Sometimes that's the best thing you could do to the child is just let them sort of figure themselves out. And enjoy watching them explore. and their little- Enjoy your coffee, have it with, you know, a bunch of adults and in peace. Or maybe just alone, in peace, you know, like just under the corner. Who cares? Take that 10, 15 minutes alone for yourself. while you Do you. And yeah, do you. Just be you. Thank you so much again. Really appreciate it. And uh, for folks that are watching, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button. This was a fantastic episode. would love to uh, probably bring you on again for the mediation when that part comes alive. And then just to hear a little bit more about it. And um, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get more and more episodes now that we're in season two. There's going to be a plenty and plethora of businesses out there that we want to bring. And if you have a business in mind that you would love for us to you know, sit down and, and have this sort of brief, honest conversation, let us know in the comments and we can definitely sure to, I'll actually, by myself personally, will be the one calling them, getting them on the show and getting all that information for you. Thanks again. Really appreciate it.